Have your Bibles, turn back with me to Romans chapter 10. We read verse 1 of the night, and we're going to read some more verses in the 10th chapter book of Romans. Say along, Brother Brent. We certainly appreciate everyone's presence. Glad he's our preacher brother and can be here and those where we pastor. Um, we thank the Lord that we can be with church this week. We've enjoyed it. And um, we certainly hope and pray the Lord will bless tonight. We are looking for him to send a blessing. I know that God, I, th- I like this old song that just sung, Jesus saved. None of us can do it, but Jesus can do it. And we're thankful that he does save. Um, but I have a thought tonight. I want to preach to you some about the righteousness that we find in Jesus Christ. We don't have any. Uh, you could go to the 64th chapter of the book of Isaiah, verse 6. I'm not going to turn there, but he said, there's a phrase that says, our righteousness is as filthy right rags in the eyes of the Lord. In other words, in his sight. There's a lot of self-righteousness in our world today. But what people need is the righteousness of the Son of God. Um, I tried to look up the word righteousness and I I tried to look at it in two or three different ways and um, I I know I'm very, very uh, limited in my vocabulary and meanings of words even, but when I think of the righteousness of the Lord Jesus, I think about He is righteousness that there. The, the first phrase of righteousness means right, doesn't it? That what Jesus does is right. And what he can do, he can save sinners. He can help. Um, when we're made righteous, we're made free in our soul. We've been set free by the grace of God, haven't we? The Bible said the truth will set you free. It will. If people believe the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, they can be saved. But I want to read to you tonight here, um, and the, the most common thing that I could think of was when I got saved, I forgot about my righteousness and what I could do, and I gave it all to Jesus. I, I use the term sometimes, I just fell in his arms. And he gave me mercy. And when I trusted him, and that's, that's what I did, and everybody say that's what you've done. When I trusted him, he gave me his righteousness. I didn't have any. And we're going to study from that angle tonight. Let's just title it, thank God for his righteousness in Jesus Christ. All right? Paul was burdened about the people here. We preached about a burden of the night. But only begin with verse 2, if you're following. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but are not according to knowledge. That doesn't matter what other plans are in this world. The, The knowledge comes from God and His Holy Word. That's the thing that's important. Many plans that God, uh, people have made, but God has one plan, and when it comes to salvation, salvation is in His Son, Jesus Christ. He is God's salvation, isn't He? But He said they have a zeal, but it's not according to knowledge. Let me, let me just hold this up and tell you, it's not according to this book, that's what He's telling us. They have a lot of things going for them and have a great zeal. But it's not right, because it's not according to the book. That's what he said. For they be an ignorant of God's righteousness. Sometimes we read the word ignorant, and we look at it the wrong way sometimes, but here he's just telling us they didn't know any different. If you don't know any difference tonight in God and his righteousness and self-righteousness and God's righteousness, I want to try to explain it to you a little bit. I want you to know that everybody can come to the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. But he said they have a zeal, but they, he said they go, uh, they, uh, 
for they being ignorant or don't know of God's righteousness, they're going about to establish their own righteousness. And this is the self-righteousness I was talking about. You ever, you ever meet people who got it figured out? It, they may not use an ounce of scripture, but they can tell you, I, I got it figured out. They may not tell you anything the scripture says, but I know what I'm doing. There's people that think they're going to work their way to heaven. And the Bible is very, very plain. On, there's no such thing. Not of works. Ephesians 2 and 8, isn't it? Or 2 and 9. Not of works, lest any man should boast. But he said they're going about, uh, uh, not only do they have a zeal, not only do they have their righteousness, but they're ignorant of God's righteousness, going about to establish their own righteousness, and have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Now let's get in our mind now. The righteousness of God is, is what God said. And God's plan is on his plan at work. And every one of us that's been born again. And that's the way you get his righteousness. Is to how the new birth. And, and, and every one of us that has been born again. That have been born again. By the Spirit of God, we have the righteousness of the Lord Jesus. <clears throat> we ought to let the Spirit lead us, that way. We ought to walk in the Spirit, as Galatians 5 said. Walk in the Spirit and you not fulfill the lust of your flesh. I have a problem with that. You do too, don't you? Every one of us, we have a problem. But we do have... God's righteousness in us. We have even his Holy Spirit in us also. But we've been made righteous through our repentance and faith in him. Through receiving him as our personal Savior, we be, we, we're made righteous. Listen to what he said. For Christ is the end of the law. Christ is the end of the law. There are some people here that hadn't submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. But Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. To how many people? To everyone. That sound like whosoever? Amen. To everyone that believes it. Now the way you obtain righteousness of God is to believe on his son as your personal savior. Now, when we think of this, since we don't have any righteousness, I, I mentioned a verse here the night and I'm not trying to repeat myself. I'm just preaching what God burdened me to preach tonight. But I'm going to turn, if you're following with me, 1 Timothy chapter 4. And he spoke about some words here about a faithful saying in verse 9. 1 Timothy 4, 9. And he said, this is a faithful saying, worthy of all acceptation. And this is what's so wonderful about it in verse 10. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach. Talking about saved people. And he said, there's a reason why we do this. Because we trust it in the living God. There's going to be trouble. There's going to be persecution. There's going to be suffering for those of us that trust in the living God. But he said, who is the Savior of all men? Comma. Especially of those that believe. Now, the, the people that get help from God is the people and that get, gets his righteousness is those that will believe in him. Those that will trust him. Um, I had a woman, if I call her by name, some of you would know him. I pastored for a number of years. And uh, she would quote this verse to me every once in a while. And she'd say, Jesus said he's the savior of all men. So that means everybody's going to be saved. I said, no, ma'am, you didn't read the rest of the verse. He is, a, he is the Savior to those that will trust him. He, he died for everybody. He will save everyone. But there's, there's something that you and I have to do. And it's very simple. It's believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's how simple it is. But he said he's the savior of all men, but especially of those that believe. Now, I've got down some scripture. I'm going to try to save a little time, and uh, I hope I can. 
But I've got down some scripture I'm going to refer to and if you'd like to follow with me. Now here the Apostle Paul in the third chapter of the book of Philippians, if you're following. He made some statements. And remember he was a persecutor of the church. And remember I read you one night this week already in the night chapter. It was on the road to Damascus that he met the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want you to see here, especially in verse 8 and 9 of the third chapter of the book of Philippians. I count all things for laws for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Remember I read you a word a while ago about knowledge? This man, there was a time that he didn't have knowledge of the Lord Jesus in his heart, but now he has the knowledge that he said, I count all things but loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Listen to what he said. And do count them but dumb. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Paul said, I've laid aside all this, let's just call it junk that I used to do. All this uh, wickedness and all this sin that I'm persecution and all the fighting I was fighting God's people, I've laid it aside. I count it but dumb that I might win Christ. You see, you don't have to add anything to God's salvation, Brother Jimmy. You just you just trust in Jesus. You don't. Uh, somebody said, "Well, I get good enough, I'm going to be saved." No, that's not why you're going to get saved. You, you're going to turn all the things behind you and forget the past. Paul mentioned that later on in this chapter, and I'm not going to read that far, but I, I hear him as he said uh, that uh, we, we can forget the past. And I know it bothers us when we have done wrong in the past sometimes, but we know that's on the blood, uh, that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sins and, and, and he forgives us even after we're saved. Isn't that wonderful? And, and he helps us. But here he said, I, I count it all dumb that I may, may win Christ and be found in him, listen now, not having my own righteousness. There's your self-righteousness again. You know, Paul thought he was a fine fella. I want to say this, he was a religious fanatic. But he still needed Jesus, didn't he? He said here, have, not having my own righteousness, which is the law, but that, uh, that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. See, this righteousness comes by the new birth. This righteousness comes by accepting Christ or by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the way you obtain the righteousness of God that we don't have. We don't have it, but we can obtain it by repentance and faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but how many of us, we have that righteousness tonight? One old fellow said, uh, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> you know, Paul said he knew too also, didn't he? First Timothy 1, 12, wasn't it? I'm not going to turn there, but he said, he, he said, I, I know whom. It was about, I don't know, six, eight years of my ministry in the first beginning of it, Brother Jimmy, I'd say, I know in whom. But the word in is not there. I don't know where it sounded better or where I just picked it up and heard it wrong or what. I don't know what caused me to do it, but I, I said for years, in whom I believe. It's, it's, in is not there. He said, I know whom. I don't think I'm adding anything to the scripture. I think that whom is Jesus, don't you? I know whom. You know, believing, uh, uh, there are a lot of folks who believe in a lot of things, Brother Bush, but you got to believe in a man called Jesus that died and suffered for us and was put in a tomb and come forth on the third day. That's the gospel, the death, the burial, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to believe in him as your personal Savior. And you can attain the righteousness of God then. Guess what? Paul did that. And the, he, that's the reason he said, I laid it all. And I counted uh, my past life is dumb. I mean, you're talking about a, not only a 
religious fanatic. Paul in his education would have made a lot of us look like a fool. That man was wise in a natural way. But being wise and having a good education and having money and all that as I preached the other night, and I, I don't know why, almost the same thing, just in a different view. But I'm going to tell you, I, I can't preach anything but what God puts on my heart. But listen, uh, it don't matter how much you own or how much you possess. It don't matter how, how, how well an education you have. Everybody that's ever been born in this world other than the Lord Jesus Christ that walked here on this earth, uh, that he didn't come here to be the Son of God. He wasn't uh, baptized to become the Son of God. He was already God's Son, uh, and he was sent here by God to pay a debt that we couldn't pay. And by repentance and faith in him, I can attain righteousness. And you can too, can't you? Another scripture I want to refer to right quickly is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Very familiar. Uh, chapter 1 and verse 30. <clears throat> he talked about what God has been made for us. And I, I know God always been here. He's, uh, he's in the beginning. He was uh, even always will and always have been. But I want you to notice he, there was a phrase made here in verse 30. He said, who of God has made unto us wisdom. You know, like two kind of wisdom taught in the scripture, the earthly and the heavenly. And God has made unto us wisdom. And he said, listen here, righteousness. He's made unto us righteousness. Since we don't have any righteousness, we need to, we need to accept the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, sanctification. Then he said, redemption. I, I'd love to take time to preach every one of them, but I, won't, but I want you to see one of the words right here in the middle is righteousness. He is our righteousness. We don't have it. We don't, take, we don't have what it takes to go to heaven. You know that? But God will give us his righteousness through his dear son that died for us. We can have the righteousness by accepting him as our Savior. I trust everyone have that tonight. Another scripture I want to turn to is in Corinthians. While you're there in 2 Corinthians. I'll turn on over a little bit further. In the 2 Corinthians verse 21. Now I'm not going to misuse the scripture, but I'm going to change two words here. And the word I'm going to change is he and him. Verse 21 of the fifth chapter of 2 Corinthians. God has made Jesus to be sin for us. God has made Jesus to be sin for us. You know, it was you and I that deserve to go to hell but Jesus died, suffered even the agony of hell I believe Jesus suffered it, that I wouldn't have to suffer it. but he said God has made him to be sin for us how about this who knew no sin this man Jesus didn't know no sin but he suffered sin for us guess why he did it he loved us Listen to what he said. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That's the only way you're going to ever get it if you don't have it tonight. You're going to get it in Jesus. And you're going to get it by repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. My church members, especially here tonight, they heard me say it a lot of times, and I'm going to say it again tonight. There was an old preacher down on the coast I used to listen to and he referred to Mark chapter 1, and I can't remember the verse right now, but there's a verse and a phrase there in Mark chapter 1. And Jesus made this statement. Of course, all this word is Jesus, whether it's in red letter or not, by the way. But Jesus made a statement there in the first chapter of Mark. And he said, repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent and believe the gospel. And this old preacher said, if anybody knew how to preach the plan of salvation, Jesus did. And he said, 
you better do that if you plan on going to heaven. Repent and believe the gospel. I agree with him, don't you? If you go into heaven, you're going to have to repent and believe the gospel. And sometimes we hear people talk about repentance, and I, uh, I, I'm not here casting any stones whatsoever, so just get that out of your mind before you get thinking that way. But I've seen people, Brother Jack, get in the pulpit and just explain repentance just all. I mean, just explain it away. It didn't even mean anything when they got through. All in the world, repentance means you turn from your way to God's way and depend on Him to help you and forget about what you think about it. You change your mind and you listen to God and His Word and His book instead of listening and trying to follow your way. That'll get results, friend. When you turn from your way and give it all to God and let Him handle it, it'll work. It works every time. But it's in Jesus we have this righteousness. Another scripture that I want us to notice is in Galatians 3, if you're following. Galatians 3, verse 13. There's a lot to be said about this. But he said, Christ has redeemed us. Galatians 3, 13. Christ has redeemed us. I've told people that I used to love the old song. I, I, I've tried to sing bass all my life. I still can't sing it worth a flip, but I, I still try. But I used to like the old song that said, I'm redeemed because it had bass in it. And guess what? I like it now because I have been redeemed. I like it even better now because I know what it says and I, I've experienced what it says. I have been redeemed. So he said in this 13th verse of the 3rd chapter of Galatians, he said here, uh, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now, listen to what he said here. Being made a curse for us. Christ was made a curse for us. Christ, Hebrew said, Christ tasted death for every man. Christ made a curse for us. See, Christ didn't die for his sin, but a, a, a read the whole 53rd chapter book of Isaiah sometime, and you'll find out uh, that for our transgressions, for our iniquity, and, and, and he did it all for us. He, he didn't die for himself uh, that he could go to heaven. He was already in heaven before he come, and he's already gone back to heaven, seated the right hand of the Father, but Christ died of that, that you and I could live. And, and, and he came here purposely to fulfill the work that his father sent him to do. And by the way, he done an excellent job. He done a perfect job. And he still can be reached. He, he knows our feelings. He knows our thoughts even far off. He knows our need. He knows who's saved. He knows who's lost. But he wants everybody to allow him to make them righteous in him. To allow him to save them. He wants everybody to have this life that only he can give. And that's Jesus Christ. So even Christ has made a curse for us. And that, that's some of the same teaching that was mentioned in, uh, uh, in, in 1 uh, Corinthians 1 30, as I mentioned. Now, I want, I want you to listen to another statement here in Romans 3 22, if you're following. Romans 3 22. The righteousness of God, which is by faith, of Jesus Christ. The righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. Now, listen. It's upon all, or unto all at least, and then upon all them that believe. Now, that's what I've been trying to set forth all, all, all time tonight. It's given to the believer. 
Righteousness of God is given through Jesus Christ to the believer when you accept him at Christ as your Savior. So he said here, it's unto all and upon all them that believe. Now, if there's any rejection, it's going to be on the human part of us and not God. If a person dies in their sin, you ever heard people say, well, you know, Christ is so loving and so kind and so merciful that he won't send nobody to hell. You ever heard that? Sure you've heard that. You know who sent people to hell? The people that reject the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Christ prepared hell for the devil and his angels. You remember reading that? But you don't have to go there. People don't have to go there. But people will go there because we read that hell has enlarged itself. Why would hell have to enlarge itself? You think God made a mistake? No. But there's going to be wide is that gate, he said, that goes the way of destruction. Narrow is the gate that goes to eternal life. I might say, well, there's more to it than that. There are more to it than that. But let me tell you, the people that miss heaven is the people that miss the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ and accept it personally for themselves. They fail to repent. They fail to believe the gospel. I pastored a man one time. I'm going to tell this and I'll try to hush. And he, he, he was as good a moral boy as you've ever seen in your life. Uh, I, I could stand here and just talk a lot about him. A lot of good things he helped me with in life. And I, was, I was his mother and dad's pastor. And uh, he come along later on in life after I went to church there. And uh, he, he was just a young man, but he was able to do a little work. And we was going to put up some uh, fences, going to do some fence work. And this man needed some help. He asked me, would I come and help him? And I told him I would. And we didn't have an old tractor with the, uh, you know, with the post hole diggers and things. We had the old hand post hole diggers. And uh, I, I take the post hole digger, uh, Brent, and I spray the spray some paint on that handle. That's how deep I want them holes. Don't sound like it'd be hard to figure that out, does it? And he looked at that post hole digger and he said, uh, he, was a, he was a real smart boy now. And he, 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 he's got a wonderful education right now. And he's working a wonderful job. He's well known and well, well off. God bless him. But he said, how far is that? How deep is that? And, you know, I finally got aggravated with him. I said, what difference does it make? He said, how big around is that hole? You ever met people that way? There's people that way when it comes to trying to tell them about Jesus. They say, oh, well, now, uh, how do I know he come? How, how do I uh, uh, are you sure he was resurrected? I'm positive. The Bible said he was. Listen, you just can't believe this little part like some of those false religions. <coughs> Brother came to my house one day and he, he said, uh, I believe so and so, and, and, and I said, well, prove it to me about the Bible. He read a half verse here, and he wrote over there and read another half verse, and wrote over there. I said, wait a minute, you didn't read the first, all that first verse. He said, well, I don't need to. I said, yes, you do. You need to rightly divide it. I said, go back and read it, and what you try to set forth is not there. And he went back, and he said, well, it's not, is it? He said, that's what our preacher said. Listen. You young people in middle age, old age, whoever you are, if you've never had the righteousness of the precious Son of God, you better quit listening to everybody that comes along. Now, I know, I'm not insinuating at all Brother Brent's going to preach something that's not the truth, but I'm telling you, you better go back to the house and look at it and see if it's the truth. Uh, he can make mistakes, I can make mistakes, and God help me, I'd be willing to apologize, I know he would, if you can prove that we're wrong by the scripture, and, and I know we make uh, mistakes just humanly, but listen, when it comes to the plan of salvation, there is not but one way, and that's Jesus. 
And if you miss his righteousness, if you miss his plan, repentance and faith in him, if you miss that, you miss heaven. That's going to be a sad thing, isn't it? By the way, this boy, he was so particular. He said, you don't mind, I'm going to go to the truck and get a tape. I'm going to measure where you painted that. And I'm going to measure this hole. Because I'd just like to know how big it is and how deep it is. Now there's some people that tries to figure out God like that. You won't never do it, friend. Yeah, preacher, if you could prove to me, I ain't got to prove to you nothing. God's already proved himself right here. He's the precious son of God. I ain't got to prove anything. It's already been proven. It's already, thy word is settled in heaven, he said. I, this word is all we got to go by it. I wouldn't know I was lost if I hadn't had this word. I wouldn't know where I, what I, why I'm, do, I'm here. I wouldn't know where I'm going when I die. I wouldn't know anything rightfully if I didn't have this. So if you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, you can be saved and you can have his righteousness. Well, it's anything. Maybe the odd message is what God put on my heart. May the Lord bless you.